Come on. Hello, dear listener. Before we get into today's show, quick ask. If you find value in today's show or you've gotten value out of a previous show, please leave us a quick five-star review. Be super grateful. Thanks a lot. Welcome to Money Savage, a savage approach to personal finance. This is George Grumbacher, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, a strong and powerful Grant Norwood. Grant, are you ready to do this? I am. Thanks, George. Yeah, excited to have you on. Grant is the president at Norwood Energy Corp. Again, I'm excited to have you on. Grant, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Well, I'm from Texas. I'm 29 years old, and I guess I grew up here in North Texas. I spent a lot of time with my grandfather driving around all of his job sites he oversaw for his construction company, and that's where I learned about work ethics, working hard, and treating people honestly and fairly. And a lot of my business interactions today stem from what I learned or just observing or observed him doing. You know, and another good thing was a lot of his work was pressure stations for pipelines like InLink. I made a lot of connections and that helped me get to where I am. So what I do is we finance oil and gas projects. We bring in investors and we try to mitigate as much risk as possible in a business as risky as oil and gas. So far, we're batting a thousand. I hope we keep that tradition alive as long as possible. Um, but you know, every company has hiccups here and there and there are things you can't control. But for the time being, like I said, we're on the right track. Nice. All right, cool. So, so what does it mean to be batting a thousand? What it means to be batting a thousand is we've never missed a well. So not many people can say that. And I mean, I can't say that it's not because we are drilling shale wells, but you know, those things can still go wrong. But as far as our conventional wells, that's a real feather to have in your cap. It could be because we're a young company, but you know, it's, it's still something that, you know, most people would give a lot of credit to. Okay. So walk me through how, how you come to have an engagement. So somebody owns a piece of land, they say, you know what, I think I've got oil underneath here. Do they bring you in to check and then, or does somebody else do that? And then they bring you in to actually drill the hole. So it's really the other way around. So we designate an area of interest and then we start pulling title on the landowners in that given area. And we try to figure out where we can build drilling units and we seek these people out and we ask them if we can explore for oil and gas on their property. And from there we secure a lease and we secure a permit and we start drilling. Got it. Fascinating. Okay. See, I, I had that a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> well, you had it just a hundred percent backwards, but okay. <laughs> right. You know, it's just the other way around. Got it. All right. So how do you identify the, the areas of interest? Uh, a lot of it's geology and, you know, the easiest place to find oils where it's already been found. This country has been drilled up. So, you know, it's rare that you go into an area that no one has ever heard of or drilled a well before, although we've done it a few times and that's where we've had our biggest successes. You know, some of the guys that pioneered the industry found the best, best wells by pure accident. Got it. All right. So, um, is is there a term that y'all use for an area that's already historically been drilled? I mean, it's referred to as proven. Okay. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to look at it, but what was the Sorry, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I guess that's the answer. Is just that 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 you refer to as proven. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, drawing a parallel between the mining industry, where there's maybe there's there's all these different gold mines. Just for example, uh, 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 across Canada, but some companies will go in, and those are referred to as just historical, you know, finds. But due to right. new technology, yeah, I guess legacy yeah. is the best term for oil and gas. They'll call it a legacy field. You know, and they do a lot of infill drilling. You know, Luling is notorious. Um, different areas of the Permian Basin are notorious. Um, yeah, so proven and legacy would be our terms within the industry. And is it 
is is there a matter of time that 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 you look at has has technology changed where 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 you can look at a, a a legacy proven property and say okay nobody's really been here for a while it hasn't been doing a lot but I think that we can do a better job is that what it is? That's very true. So yeah, I mean technology is always improving, and you know there's never there's no such thing as the last barrel. There's always it's always the next barrel. So. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys make their living going into some of these legacy fields and, you know, changing things up just a little bit. Sometimes you come up whole. Sometimes you institute a pressure maintenance system. Um, there's various techniques, and they do work. So I don't know a lot about um, a lot about just the different ways that, that we extract oil from the earth. Which, which, mm-hmm. which, which, which way are you doing it? So we'll drill conventionally, which just means a vertical hole. You perforate the casing and, you know, if the pressure's there, then it'll flow naturally. And then it goes from naturally to artificially, and then it has to be pumped. We also drill horizontal wells and frack them. Those usually will naturally produce on their own pressure for anywhere between six to about 18 months. And then they have to be pumped as well. And those are the two main methods. And we do use both of them. Okay, fair enough. Um, so obviously, you'd love for to drill a hole straight down and for the oil to come up naturally, right? Right. That, be, <laughs> <laughs> um, is is it's cheaper? Yeah. Is 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 there like a, a tipping point or an inflection point where you say, okay, or how how do you know when to cut bait and 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 to move on versus keep trying to go horizontal or bring more pressure in? I mean, you kind of know from the beginning what your goal is, and then you have to improvise if your goals aren't met. So, yeah, you'd like to drill down, pressure's there, everything goes well. And a lot of times it is, and it's just all wells decline, and you have to do different things. So you could leave it on its own pressure. Let's say a well comes on at 100 barrels a day, and, you know, a year later it's down to 65 barrels a day, and you go, okay, well, is it worth the money to pump it? speed up the net present value, time value of money, produce more oil, but at a little higher cost, um, make your returns a little bit faster. You know, it, it really just comes down to economics. Yeah. I imagine you need to track everything and I'm sure that the price of oil also plays into that too. Right. Yeah. If you wind up having a month where the price is 20% higher, you're probably going to be okay with spending a little bit more money to extract it. How do you, how do you plan for that? How do we plan for low prices or how do we plan for high prices? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we you have to plan for low prices a lot more than you do yeah. high prices. High prices, um, you know, costs matter, but they matter less. Uh, low prices, you really just got to hang on for the ride. And, and I mean, we kind of went into every one of our projects with the mindset that oil could go down to $30 a barrel and be there for a sustained period of time. Um, the market's changing a lot. We've had a crazy year and, you know, we aren't producing oil just for the sake of producing oil. We're producing oil for profit. So, you know, the lowest possible operating costs. And I think we're amongst the top few, um, in that department, you know, that that's our main strategy and our main goal, you know, return of capital is a lot more important to us than return on capital. You know, you can't go broke doubling your money. You can't go broke tripling your money. And sometimes guys are looking to just hit it out of the park. Hmm. And that's, I just don't have the stomach for that. You cannot go broke doubling or tripling your money. That that sounds like a silly thing to say, but right. It's, it's return on return of capital versus return. You think return. it's silly, but some people need to keep it in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> so, so. How do you how do you finance these 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 projects? Is it your own money and and, and the company's money? Do you borrow? How, how 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 does that work? Most of the time, it is my own money. Um, at least the majority of it. So, you know, I don't I can't say I've got any projects without a single investor. But for the most part, you know, we cover upwards of you know seventy five eighty percent of the project. And you go, okay, well, what does twenty percent gets you? Well, it allows you to do more projects in a given year. So, you know, you do 10 projects, you know, 20%. Actually, they've funded quite a bit. 
Yeah, well, that certainly makes sense. All right, so do you have a do you have well, I, I suppose every different opportunity is 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 unique, but you probably have a good sense of how much it's going to cost to mm-hmm. attack or to explore. So how 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 do you figure that out? The costs vary a little bit, but not a whole lot. And you'd think it would change tremendously with the price of oil. And it does change, but I wouldn't say tremendously. You know, we use the same service providers every time. And if we feel like they could get the job done cheaper, we let them know. Um, If times are good and we know that other people are using their services, you know, we're not going to complain. And, you know, we will pay, pay up a little bit to make sure we get taken care of first. That's just what you have to do. Sure. Yeah. I, 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 I can certainly appreciate that. Um, so you've been at this for, you, you said you were working with your grandfather. And so the mm-hmm. industry and the world has certainly changed during that duration of time. Right. So where we're at today, looking forward, how, how do you see doing what you're doing? How, how sustainable is it for, for you as a career? Sustainable for me as a career would, well, I mean, if the insinuation is that oil's going somewhere, I'm not worried at all. And I think most people in my industry aren't worried at all. Um, You know, we've had things challenge oil and gas in the past. And the thing that everyone needs to realize is that we had a much more formidable enemy, and that was nuclear. Hmm. You know, and nuclear was the thing that was going to end oil and gas and it didn't you know it's in too many household products we use it in much more than just energy Um, although energy is the biggest you know it there's not going to be a way to phase it out on a large scale okay i i don't know that i'm i I have my brain around that where else are we using oil i mean even your tesla you know it took oil to make those rubber tires that it rides on um And that's such a small percentage of vehicles. And even if they did take every car and that's an inner combustible engine and replace it with a Tesla, you'd see demand dented by about 15, 18, maybe 20 percent at its best. And then you have two or three third world countries catch up with the rest of the world. And, you know, it makes up percentage of that. So, you know, I'll I'll give you that 15, 20 percent of light duty vehicles. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And here's a here's here's a question that that might expose me for being super dumb. Is the earth producing more oil? Like is it creating more or is there a finite amount? I think there's a finite amount because the rate it produces oil is so slow that generations upon generations upon generations I don't think that more would be created in a in a way that would benefit anyone in the next several generations lifetime so that's a widely debated topic and i think that it is a limited resource got it interesting so if if you were to have to move on from the oil industry is there a certain technology that, that 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 you would move to or a certain kind of energy that 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 you would move to you, that you say this is the next best hmm i'd go right back to nuclear um i think disposing of some of the waste and some of the things that have caused some of these meltdowns if those could be mitigated that's probably our next best source yeah interesting and so for people who are listening and um, think, okay, I, I, I look at the, the, the price of, of oil and sometimes it's negative, which is crazy, and sometimes it's a it's, it's million dollars a barrel or whatever, how, do you, how, how can an ordinary person get involved with, with oil and gas? So two parts of that question. You know, we did see it go negative this year, but that was really just, future contracts expiring. It lasted all of 24 hours. Um, I don't think we'll ever see it again, but it's not outside of the realm of possibility. Um, And then how would somebody get involved in oil and gas? I guess there's many ways of skinning cats. So I guess you'd have to know what part of it you want to be in. Um, I mean, you can can trade stock within public companies. Um, 
you can be a service provider, you can buy minerals, you can buy interest in wells like mine. I mean, it's just, there's so many options and you kind of need a strategy. But if you don't know anything at all, I mean, something like what I do would be a great place to start if you have liquid capital sitting there on the sidelines and you're wanting a place to put it. Um, you can stomach a little bit of risk, but it's relatively small in comparison to the returns. And, you know, it's it's really what that person wants to do with their portfolio. Yeah. Well, walk me through that process of how somebody could invest with, with one of your projects. Um, so typically, you know, you need to be accredited um, and you would really just request information, read through the information, anything that's confusing, someone from my team's going to walk you through. I've spent a lot of time trying to make videos and different educational um, materials. I've got a lot that I didn't make that I refer people to. Um, you know, it was relatively time consuming and difficult to educate somebody on this the first handful of times. But after you go and do something several hundred times, it gets a lot easier and a lot quicker. I'd say the quick, the complete turnaround time for someone to learn about what we're doing. Um, I guess get a good idea of how everything's going to work, where their money goes, how they get it back. Um, when they get paid, why they get paid, what, what metrics are involved. That's usually about a five to six day turnaround. So, you know, we've sped it up a little bit. Fair enough. Nice. Well, Grant, Savage Nation is ready for your difference making tip. What do you have for them? Well, my difference making tip, I guess if we're going to go the business route, I'll use the one I always use and that's just triangulate opinions from two respected people in the industry. Um, if you're trying to, I guess, venture into my world, you got to get good at picking jockeys. You know, you're not going to do this yourself, so you're going to get involved with a professional, and picking the right professional is probably the most important part. You know, you're relying on them to make sound decisions for you. So um, check references, um, compare them to others that you're considering, and just put it all on paper and see which one makes the most sense. And, you know, you feel like can lead you in the right direction. I like that. That is great stuff that definitely gets come on. Come on. Grant, thank you so much for coming on. Where can Savage Nation learn more about you? Where can they find these resources that you were talking about? I've tried to make sure that there's not too many social media outlets you can't find me on. So <laughs> whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, um, send me an email, Google the company. There's quite a few outlets. Excellent. And give me the website. NorwoodEnergyCorp.com. Perfect. Well, Savage Nation, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Grant your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to NorwoodEnergyCorp.com. Is that right? That is correct. NorwoodEnergyCorp.com. You can find Grant all over social media. Shoot him an email, and I will list all those in the notes of the show. Thanks again, Grant. Appreciate it, George. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight as we are all in this together. Spending too much time on social? Is your daily screen time over two hours? Are you a little bit overweight? Not saving enough money? Any or all of these are familiar. Strive could be for you. The Strive two-week online boot camp will help you to detox your mind, body, and money getting you on your way to a happier, healthier, wealthier, and more confident life. Go to strivedetox.com, S-T-R-I-V-E-D-E-T-O-X.com, and get your mind, body, and money right.